Hey everyone, welcome to our last session today with Android, hacking Android and iOS apps with DeepLinks and XSS. This is with Abraham from 7A Security. So he's gonna start the workshop in a second. Or is yours. So can everybody hear me and see me? Yeah, all looking good. OK, good. So OK, then let's start. Cool. So thank you for coming. Um, today's session is uh, about hacking uh, Android uh, and iOS apps with deep links and XSS. So this is a free webinar slash workshop, right? It's really a workshop because we have uh, some exercises that you can try on your own. So uh, I sent everybody who registered um, an invite to the training portal. So when you register and you log in, you will have uh, all the slides and everything um, that I'm going to use today. Uh, as well as by clicking on the links from the slides, you will be able to download uh, all the apps to to do the exercise that I will cover uh, in the demos today, right? So, so yeah. So let's get started. So um, we're going to talk about uh, hacking Android and iOS apps with deep links and XSS. So first, uh, I will give you a brief introduction uh, about this, and then we will talk about deep link attacks, achieving user impersonation uh, and authorization controls. Uh, and deep link attacks to uh, make phone calls. And then we will see XSS uh, against mobile apps. Uh, and in particular, the scenario of uh, data exfiltration with XSS, right? So how to read local files from the phone and send them to an attacker uh, on both uh, Android and iOS. So I hope you find this uh, entertaining. So I'm Abraham Aranguren. I'm the CEO of 70 Security. Uh, if you like this presentation, there's a lot of public pentest reports that you can see on the main website. So if you go to publications, there's a lot of uh, public pentest reports that you can read free. So a very fast way to learn about what you should not do uh, when you uh, build your own mobile app. Uh, we have delivered training at Black Hat USA, Hack in the Box, OWAS Global AppSec, Nullcon, and many others, Hackfest as well. Uh, this um, upcoming uh, for upcoming stuff, you can check the training link. And then uh, a while back, I also wrote a course for eLearn Security called Practical Web Defense. So uh, this was about hacking applications and then defending them. I don't make any money out of this anymore, but just to mention that I'm also one of the leaders of uh, the project leaders of OWASP OWTF, which is an OWASP flagship project. So if you type OWTF.org in your browser, that takes you there. For all the presentations, you can check my uh, slide share and then some, some certification stuff. So um, if after all this pandemic, we meet someday, um, you know, I can tell you how this happened over a beer or two. So yeah, from the public report, this got, this got a bit more attention. So uh, Smart Sheriff was an application that was mandated in the entire country of South Korea, so by law, uh, parents and children were forced to install this application. So typical uh, political idea of, uh, you know, let's save the children and then things get approved. So uh, in theory, it was a nice idea to, uh, you know, protect the children so that the parent would control like during what times the child would use the phone uh, and things like this. But in practice, the implementation was really bad. So there was a lot of attacks we tested them twice so you can see the two public pentas reports it was so bad that we even gave a talk about it so you can watch that on youtube these are the slides for that and then uh, another uh, series of interesting um, pentas reports are uh, the ones for the chinese government you know this uh the context of these applications is that there's a muslim minority in a region of china called xinjiang and then the human rights activists were concerned that uh, maybe they are gathering too much information about the citizens. Uh, maybe this would constitute a human rights violation. So uh, we help the human rights activists to answer these questions. Right. So these are more privacy related, and these 
are more security related, right? So these are just some of the ones that got a bit more attention on the news, and then there's a lot more uh, pen test reports uh, on the website, right? So this course is also uh, written in part by uh, Anirudh Anand. So he's a security researcher. Uh, he's focused on web and mobile application security. He likes to play CTFs and he's a member of the number one uh, ranked team in India called Team Bios. So he's an occasional bug bounty uh, hunter. So he has found this in Google, Microsoft, including GitLab, Sandbox, and others. He also likes uh, open source and has contributed to some projects. He has some certifications and then this is his blog and his Twitter. So, yeah, this is more uh, for the course itself, right? So if uh, if somebody plans to take the course, then you need, uh, you know, ability to read PDF files. And sometimes people come with a corporate laptop and then they cannot do anything. So that is not ideal, right? So you need a USB allowed, ability to, you know, at least import VMs and things like this. 8 gigabytes of RAM should be plenty, Six, 60 gigabytes of free space, and then um, for the mobile courts, we recommend VirtualBox because we use GeniMotion, and GeniMotion uses uh, VirtualBox under the hood, so VirtualBox is going to be uh, better this course. And then, uh, and then we will use Verb during the class, but uh, you know, Zap and Fiddler can also uh, do the job if you are more comfortable with that. And then uh, another thing is that. Um, in, in all courses, right? So normally you are going to get digital copies of training material, lab VMs, test apps, and source code. So the first four points are kind of the standard. And then what maybe we do a little bit different is uh, we give you lifetime access to the training portal, including all future updates, free step by step video recordings, slides, and lab PDFs, and unlimited email support, right? We also have uh, Slack, uh, you know, where all the trainees also, you know, get to ask the questions and get answers in more kind of closer to real time, right? So just to mention that, so uh, I'm going to briefly talk about the course like just for five minutes. And then while I do this, I will uh, focus a little bit more on what we're going to cover today, right? So the first part talks about hacking Android and IoT apps by example. So we start with uh, using Termox and try to understand how permissions work uh, in Android. So we do a general setup check and all this. So we are not going to do uh, any of this today, but just to mention this. Uh, and then in lab two, we talk about uh, reversing and source code analysis. So here uh, we will do uh, some of uh, stuff today uh, in that we will look at the Android manifest uh, a little bit. Um, and then we also check like some uh, automated tools like Quark and Mobis uh, and, and others, right? Then in lab three, attacking Android apps. So this is, uh, some of these is what we're going to cover today. So today we will do a little bit of Drosser. In particular, we will uh, exploit uh, deep links with uh, Drosser. So we will see a little bit of this. Uh, and we will also see uh, deep links in Android. We will do the, the demo for Periscope. Uh, but in the course, we also have another one for uh, Shopify with a nice fingerprint bypass. So this, uh, you know, just to mention that in the course, like you have some real applications. And in the workshop today, uh, we will also use this Periscope uh, cursor request forgery with deep links. This will be one of the demos today. And then with web views and data exfiltration, we will do uh, a little bit of this today. Not, not the whole thing because we don't have time, but a little bit so that you see how uh, this works, right? With XSS and data exfiltration and attacking web views uh, and all this. Then lab four, uh, art of mind in the middle. We won't do this today, but just uh, to mention this. And then we also take uh, repackaging uh, Android apps. So modifying the applications at rest and uh, all this uh, stuff, like bypassing detection and doing other things. And then in lab six, we talk about instrumentation, Exposed by passing pinning, monitoring the application on broad time, and other very cool things. Then each day ends with a CTF with open challenges for you to practice. And then in part two, we talk about uh, hacking iOS and iOS apps by example. So we start with an introduction, how to install apps, download stuff from the broken phone, uh, and other things like this. Uh, 
And then, yeah, here we will talk about decompiling, black box analysis, and so on, but today we are not going to take this. And in lab three, we will do some of this today, right? So we will do uh, attacking web views and data exfiltration, uh, attacking, uh, and then finding and exploiting URL handlers, right? So these are the two things. So just to mention that what I'm going to show you today is a very small part of the full course is about, but you know, just so that you have a little bit of background about where the things we're going to uh, to cover today, where they fall uh, in the course, right? Then there's the man in the middle for iOS, like what is different and how to bypass spinning and do other things like this uh, with man in the middle, uh, modifying hyper files as REST. So we will patch uh, binaries and other things. Uh, also, when you patch uh, an application, because in iOS, things tend to be a, a binary, but sometimes you have a, an application written in JavaScript. Uh, you might not need to modify the binary. You can modify just the JavaScript file. So we have some examples uh, of that as well. And then we take uh, instrumentation. We also take all different things here. Uh, bypassing jailbreak detection using uh, Cydia Twix, uh, introduction to Ccrypt, introduction to Flex. Flex is a really cool tool. Um, allows you to do a lot of stuff from the phone, and then we also cover passion for it, right? And then at the end, again, open challenges. So that is just a you know very quick overview about what the course is about. And today, we're going to see some small parts uh, of it. So with this, um, now we're getting started with the actual uh, webinar slash workshop. So does crosshair request forgery exist in mobile apps? Uh, what do you think? Um, yes, is this a yes from, can you hear me, or is this a yes from uh, Crosshair Request Forgery existing mobile apps? So anybody? Seems, yeah, on the stream, it seems it's one slide behind of where, where I am. So so yeah, what do you think? Um, Crosshair request forgery on mobile apps, yes, no? It was at the beginning, yes. Yes, I think so, exactly. So, yes, so Crosshair Request Forgery uh, exists uh, in mobile apps, right? So, so yeah, we're going to see this uh, in this section now. So we're going to cover uh, deep link attacks, uh, achieving user impersonation, and deep link attacks to bypass uh, authorization controls. Right, so first we have to talk a little bit about the basics, right? So introduction to uh, well, deep links. So deep links are URIs that can be used to uh, navigate to different pa parts of an application. They are available on both Android and iOS. Then deep links can have, but do not have to have custom schemes, right? So I'll explain this in a moment. So for example, a social media application could register uh, a custom URL scheme like social app and then colon slash slash homepage. So this would be uh, a custom scheme this social app here, right so any click to such a link will be automatically uh, directed to this application so this provides the ability to navigate to different uh, activities and pages so we can have social app colon slash slash profile and this we could open the profile on there then we could also have social app and then colon slash slash profile profile pic and then this will uh, allow us to access the, the profile picture in the profile page. So when we are looking uh, at the Android manifest, uh, Browsable is uh, interesting, but it is not necessary for this kind of app. Right? So um, we have uh, an activity. So this starts with the activity tag on the uh, Android manifest, and then we will have the name of the activity. And then 
you can see here uh, there's no exported true, right? So uh, this is because the activity is not uh, explicitly exported, so it doesn't have exported true here, but it has intent filter. So the intent filter uh, of uh, the of this activity uh, implicitly exports this uh, activity to other apps on the phone, right? So even if you don't see any exported here, if there's an intent filter, this means that any app installed on the phone can call this activity uh, and try to attack it. So in this case, we have uh, Android scheme of some app, then the host part of the URL is called get creds, and then the path prefix is uh, slash user, right? So this means that we have uh, we have to to build a URL like this scheme colon slash slash host and path. So in this case, it would be some app and then colon slash slash get creds and then slash user. Right. So this would be a way to call this uh, deep link. And then uh, if we also have this browsable thing, which is optional, but when it is present, it makes the attack more interesting because. Uh, it makes attacks more interesting because sometimes uh, we can also uh, exploit these issues uh, from a browser, right? So if you use the browsable uh, uh, category for an activity, this means the activity can also be invoked from uh, the Android browser, right? So this is uh, this can be uh, interesting as well. Right? So with this. Uh, we will start with a, a case study with a periscope cross channel request forgery using uh, deep links. So, <clears throat> for everybody who registered, I send you an invite to the, the training portal. So, when you log in and you download the slides, you while well, you are still logged in from the slides, just click on this link and then this will download the vulnerable uh, periscope version. So, if you use the latest, uh, it won't work because this was patched. You need this uh, exact same uh, version, right? So not any version of Periscope will work for this. You need this exact uh, version that you can get from the training port, right? So if anybody has problems, just uh, send an email or something, and we will uh, troubleshoot them, right? So email admin at 70security.com, and we can either uh, give you access or help you troubleshoot if you uh, have any problems. And then I'll mention this at the end as well, but you can also get this workshop and other workshops for free on the store. So uh, so that's something else as well. So if you go to store.sevenisecurity.com, you can get this workshop and other workshops that are also there. There's a much longer version of this um, that is almost four hours. Um, that is also about mobile apps as well. And it has like the same demos as here, but then in the middle, there's a lot of slides covering all of the uh, different attacks. So, you can also find out interesting, right? So download the slides and then you click on this and then this will download the vulnerable version of Periscope and then you can install this in some Android phone or Jenny Motion or any Android emulator. And then you can try uh, this exercise, right? So I'm explaining this because I, I will do the demo afterwards, but as you follow along, um, it will make things a little easier. So one thing after you install the Periscope, uh, you will need to create uh, an account, of course, uh, because to demonstrate the deep link issue, uh, you need to have uh, an account first, right? Otherwise, uh, when you open the deep link, it will just open uh, this uh, where you don't have an account yet, so you won't be able to see that this works, right? So just click on create new account, and then you can create it using Google, Facebook, Twitter, phone number, that's your choice. It doesn't really matter. You can use whatever you want. And then after uh, this is created, um, then you can, you're ready to, to start doing this, right? So uh, one thing would be, um, so to, to look at for cross site request forgery issues or deep link issues in Android applications, first, uh, we need to decompile the application and take a look at the Android manifest, and then from there, take a look at the activities as well to try to, you know, find some potential problems here, right? So, uh, so the main thing that we are looking for are scenarios where a malicious attacker could trick a user to follow uh, arbitrary accounts without the user consent using deep links or something similar like that, right? So some sort of a deep link that performs an action 
uh, without any user confirmation, right? So if you have a scenario like that, then it may be possible to uh, get a cross site request forgery. So the first, the first thing we need to do is to decompile the application. So you can do that with APK tools. So if you, if you do APK tool and then D for decompile and then the, the Periscope APK, this will uh, decompile uh, the APK. And then from there, uh, you will be able to, um, you know, uh, investigate the, the problem, right? So when you run APK tool, this will look something like this. You see an APK tool, blah, blah, blah. Then you will come out like this. Uh, and then we can start looking uh, at the Android manifest, right? So you open the Android manifest.xml, and then you basically have to look for these uh, intent filters, right? So uh, you see like action and then category, uh, browsable. Uh, and then here you have like the data, Android host, Android path prefix, Android scheme. So this is this is showing you how the DeepLinks structure is, right? So I mentioned before that DeepLinks uh, can have uh, custom schemes, but do not really have to have custom schemes. So this is a scenario where we can see that, right? So in this case, we have an Android scheme of ACDPS, an Android host of uh, www.periscope.com then a path prefix of slash. So this means if you have like HTTPS column slash slash and then www.periscope.tv uh, slash, then this activity, the activity that has this in the filter uh, will be invoked, right? So uh, the same way that we will use um, attack uh, deep links using custom schemes, we can also uh, attack the applications using uh, HTTPS uh, links as long as the application has uh, registered uh, these links on the, on the activity itself, right? And then you will see there's a lot more possible combinations. In this particular case, we will focus on the host the user, the path prefix slash, and then the scheme is PSCP. But uh, this same attack is also possible with uh, other combinations here, right? So. Uh, here, the deep link has the scheme PSCP. So you can see that here, Android scheme PSCP and the user uh, is the host. So this means the deep link is going to be PSCP colon slash slash user, right? So that is uh, how it is. So this means that there could be a parameter passed to this deep link, which could be the Periscope user ID. So the user ID is a unique identifier for any given user or profile uh, of Periscope, right? So um, for this uh, demo, we will use uh, these particular users, right? So PSCP, uh, colon slash slash user, and then MKBHD. So this is just one guy in Periscope. Uh, and then we have uh, several ways to test this, right? One way would be to use uh, another application to demonstrate. So for this, you can use DeepLink Tester. You can also get this from the training portal. So as you're logged in, just click on this and just download it and install it on your Android phone. You can test it there. I'll demo this as well. Uh, and then you go to DeepLink Tester. And then in here, you have PSCP colon slash slash user and then uh, the user ID. And then when you click on go to URI, it will open uh, the guy uh, on Periscope, right? So this is basically just opening the profile. So we are still not doing any damage here. Uh, I mean, it could still be annoying for pranking purposes, but nothing very serious, right? We are not following uh, the person automatically. We can also do this with an ADB command. So we can do ADB shell and then Android intent action view, and then with data of the intent being uh, deep link. So PSCP colon slash slash user MBK MKBHC. Uh, and then this will also open the profile. And then we can also um, do this uh, from Drowser, right? So Drowser is basically uh, uh, an application that simulates uh, a malicious application uh, on the phone. Uh, and then from the computer, you connect to uh, this Drowser agent uh, and you can run commands, right? So I will demonstrate this as well. One thing that you might want to do is to run the scanner. So Drowser has um, this scanner 
that you can run. So you can run scanner activity browsable uh, dash a and then TP periscope dot Android. So this will scan the application for browsable activities. Now you can see that this is only checking for browsable activities and not all activities with Dibli, right? But still, it can be uh, interesting or a good start. You will also notice that uh, Drawster finds a lot less combinations than, that are actually present uh, on the application. But again, this can still be a good starting point. Just don't rely uh, on these for comprehensiveness because this is not comprehensive, right? Nothing beats uh, a human with a brain. Um, so yeah, this is not uh, perfect, but you know it can sometimes uh, save you a little bit of time or point you uh, in the right direction. So with this, we can then do like run app activity start and then slash dash action uh, Android in ten action view, and then data URI PSCP colon slash slash user kphc, and then uh, this will launch uh, the profile as well. Now, because the activity is browsable, we can also do this from uh, this link, right? So if you open this uh, link from your browser, then you click on open user, this will open the profile as well, right? So you need to do uh, ADB shell and then Android interaction view, and then you can pass the URL like this using ADB, and then this will open it in the browser, um, unless you want to type this Android phone, which is also fine. You can also copy paste from the into the phone if you are using a Jenny motion or something. So this is how this will look like, right? So you can click on open user and this will uh, open the user. So um, four different ways of doing the same thing, just uh, input the deep link, right? So with deep link tester, uh, so malicious application on the phone with uh, ADB, and then um, we check with browser and now we're checking with the browser as well. Right, so this is just opening the profile. And then to actually follow the user, we have to add slash follow at the end of this, but it's basically the same thing. Uh, of course, you need to unfollow first uh, to you know, be sure that, uh, that this is working. So you have this user, mkbhd slash follow, and then go to URI and you will notice that you start following the guy. And then if you do it with ADB and then slash follow at the end, this will also follow the guy. And then if you do it from the browser, it's again the same thing with the slash follow. And then uh, from the HTML page, uh, it is the same thing. But in this case, we will click on Periscope cross Circuit Forgery Demo. And then you will see that uh, we follow uh, this person uh, as well. Right. So the HTML of this uh, proof of concept page looks like this. So PSCP colon slash slash user uh, MKVHD and then so this is just open the user, but you can see it's basically just a link containing the deep link and then Android knows that this uh, deep link has been registered by an app on the phone and it will open the app uh, on the phone uh, sending it the, the deep link right and then when we do it with a slash follow, then it will uh, open the um, you know, it will follow uh, any user who wants uh, automatically, right? So, so yeah. Uh, so, how could this work in practice? Like an attacker could, you know, embed a deep link on a web page uh, or an ad, and then the visitors would be tricked to follow a profile that the attacker sets, right? So, instead of Periscope Crosser Request Forgery Demo, in a real attack, this would say something like, we in an iPad now, then when the user clicks on it, it will automatically follow the user. Right, so for ease of access, you have this uh, link, so you can click on this, open this on your Android phone, and you can click uh, the link from there. So yeah, so how to fix this? Um, uh, to fix uh, deep link issues, you basically need to uh, prompt the user for some confirmation, right? So you want deep links because they make uh, you know functionality more useful to users. But you should also request uh, user confirmation before performing an action. So in this case, it would be like, do you really want to follow this user? And then the user tells you yes or no. Then depending on what the user says, uh, you follow the user or you don't, right? So that would be uh, a valid uh, mitigation for this kind of issues. So with this, um, let's um, let's do the demo. So let me see. 
Uh, yeah, you can see my whole screen. So I think uh, you will be able to see this. So, okay, so, so yeah, so this is the Jelly Motion uh, VM that we will use to demonstrate this issue. This is the Periscope application. So you can see, um, okay, Periscope is uh, discontinuing. I didn't know this. So, uh, okay, so this is uh, the application. Uh, and now what we're going to do is uh, first demonstrate with uh, Dibbling Tester, right? So if I go to URI here, Dibbling Tester, you can see that we are opening the profile of this guy, right? We are not following yet. Uh, and then if I, um, well, let's look at the Android manifest, right? So when you look at the Android manifest, you look for some filter. Uh, and these will show you uh, which activities have some um, filter. So here you can see uh, this is a browsable activity, um, and I can like you know keep looking for intent filters. You can see some of the intent filters have uh, Android schemes of HTTP, HTTPS, um, while others have uh, this PSCP. So here we have this PSCP user. Uh, and so on, right? So uh, methodology-wise, you would look at the Android manifest, you would look for intent filters, and then you would go back up to uh, the activity itself. So you would go to, okay, so this is the actual activity, and then you would do something like um, find uh, the activity.java, for example, and then you will open this and start analyzing the code, right? So in this case, this upload your activity, extends launch activity. So you would search for uh, this um, launch activity. And then you would like start to go through this code and figure out, uh, you know, if there's any deep link issues, right? So I'm keeping that part a little bit, but that is more or less how of course, the decompiled code is not going to be as pretty as the developer's uh, code, but it can still be enough uh, in most cases to get the job done, right? So that is how you would go out uh, about it uh, methodology-wise. And then uh, to show uh, ADV, so if I do ADV shell uh, and then third Android in 10 action view, then I'm sending as the data PSCP user and the ID of the user, so you can see it open. Uh, the user here. I'm going to do it again. Now that I closed, then you can see that uh, we opened it, right? And then with uh, Trotter, um, first you would rule, you would run. Uh, there's no syntax for uh, this. So you would first run the scanner, right? So you do, uh, run scanner activity browsable. So this will scan for browsable activities, and this is the output. You know, it will tell you so the invocable URIs and so on. Uh, and then you pass it the ID of the app. So this would be the package name uh, in the Android manifest, right? So if I go here, Android manifest.xml, uh, I hope uh, this one from Um, you can see that is in the package, right? So it's going to be at the top of the manifest, the package. So this is what we have to pass to the browser here uh, to the scanner to find the activities, right? So this is, uh, you know, to try to find some deep links. Uh, now, again, don't rely on this 100% uh, because you're going to miss stuff, but it can be a good starting point. And then... Uh, let's first make sure uh, the profile is not open, right? So it is not open now. And now I hit I hit it with Drozer, and you can see that we open the profile. For this to work, uh, you need to have Drozer installed, and you need to open Drozer on the phone and make sure that the computer is open and connect from your computer to Drozer. Now, on the course, of course, we go into more 
detail and step by step on how to do this and it's also a vm where we put up but now for uh you know a quick workshop uh, we don't have time for all that so that is just basically uh, how it works right so when we use this command from the roster this opens the user and then uh, we can uh, do the same thing from uh, the android browser because the activity is browsable so i can click on open user and this again opens the user right so i'm just going to close it and then uh, going back to the android browser and then when i click on open user you can see that uh, you know the profile is being open right so now let's do the same thing with the follow so uh, now if i add here slash follow uh from dibbling tester you can see that this changed to following right so uh we're not following this person but this means that any app can send an intent uh, to this application and then it will follow like arbitrary uh, uh, people on the internet right whoever you tell it to follow it will follow, right so this is the problem so that is the demo for um from dibbling tester we can do the same adding the slash follow uh, from ADB. So you can see that we're following. Now I'm going to unfollow again, right? So not following. And now we can do it from Trotter. So I add here the slash follow. Uh, and you can see from Trotter it works as well. So now I'm going to unfollow. Uh, and now we can do it from, uh, from the browser, right? So following. So I'm going to unfollow again, and now I'm going to um, here to the browser and do the cursor across for the demo again. So you can see that we are following uh, the guy, right? So this is the cursor request forgery uh, with deep links, uh, Android. So so yeah, you can you know follow this these steps from. Uh, the training portal just download the apps and play with this um and yeah and i hope you find you you have fun with this one and the one for shopify <clears throat> that's in the course there's also a lot of other cool exercises in the course but the the one for shopify we will have uh, time today it's also very cool because uh it's a function that requires a fingerprint. Uh, it requires the user to enter the fingerprint to uh, log in, but using a deep link, we can bypass the fingerprint check, right? So that's pretty cool. Uh, okay, so now we're going to check deep link attacks to make phone calls, uh, which is an abbreviated version of finding and exploiting URL handlers uh, in iOS. So we have uh, an iOS phone here uh, to illustrate this. So I hope you find this entertaining. Now again, uh, just download the app from the training portal. Just click on this because we don't know, like, you know, from third-party websites if they will change the app and maybe it will work the same way or not. So the safest is to use the, the one uh, from the portal. That's the one we're sure uh, it will work fine. Uh, so, so yeah, we will use the vulnerable in secure app version two for this, uh, and then. Uh, here, methodology-wise, instead of looking at the Android manifest um, in iOS, we are going to look at the info B list. So, in particular, we are looking for um, CF bundled URL schemes, and then uh, we will look for uh, which URL schemes. Right. So, in this case, you will see these two URL schemes, like Dumb Vulnerable in Secure App and Dumb Vulnerable in Secure App Swift both uh, URL schemes will work, right? So um, you can uh, unzip the IPA and try to look at the info fillies like this, but chances are this will be binary garbage uh, unless you have a Mac. Uh, but I will show you a trick uh, to look at the info fillies using uh, filters from a global um, I'll show you that during, during the day. Right, so that's another way. If you don't have a Mac, it's another way in which you can check the info. So if you have a Mac and you have Xcode, now, if you don't have a Mac, you can Google, uh, you know, how to run a Mac from Windows or how to run a Mac from uh, Linux. 
Uh, and there's a lot of tutorials about that. Be careful. Uh, I'm not sure uh, legal how legal that is, um, but uh, just saying it's possible. Right? So you don't necessarily have to have a Mac to use Xcode to do all these things. So using Xcode, uh, because uh, Xcode only runs on Macs, right? but you can, you know, there's ways to get a Mac VM running. So when you open uh, Xcode, you will click on the um, project for Dumb Vulnerable and Secure Version 2. Uh, which is public, so you can check it there. And then you can click on this and then go to the info tab. Then you scroll down to the bottom to URL types. And here, this also shows you uh, the URL schemes, right? So we can see here there's two custom URL schemes, down vulnerable, insecure up and down vulnerable. So that's, that's the way to find them with Xcode. Uh, I'll show you the method with uh, filter in the demo. Uh, so this means that uh, dumb vulnerable insecure app Swift uh, colon slash slash and dumb vulnerable insecure colon slash slash these URLs will be opened by this app, right? So what can we do with this? Uh, we will need to look at the source code uh, and try to see if there's any vulnerability in the processing of the arguments, if there's some SQL injection, uh, some other form of injection, or cursor request forgery, or some other dangerous thing being done by the application when it opens a URL like this, right? So if you don't have Xcode, uh, the file to look for is uh, appdelegate.shift. Now, most, most of the time, uh, iOS applications now are written in Swift. Uh, before, they used to be written in Objective-C. So if you if you find the, if the application you're testing is uh, written for some reason with Objective-C, then this, instead of being .swift, it will be .m. So the M is uh, the extension for Objective-C files. .swift is the extension for Swift files, which is the modern way to uh, write uh, iOS applications, right? So, uh, but in both cases, it's the app delegate that we're looking for. So you find .dot uh, name and add delegate to Swift and point you to where that file is. And then you just take a look there and try to find vulnerabilities. Uh, in this case, we have uh, the function application, uh, open URL with a URL parameter. And then here we can see that this is splitting the URL by a string uh, called uh, slash phone slash call number. So it's taking the uh, the URL and splitting it uh, based on this, right? So what this is doing is similar to explode in PHP. So this is taking the URL and then the chunk before uh, before this string uh, will be on the zero position of the array. And then uh, whatever comes after the call number, this will be in position uh, one of the array, right? So this means that this check here is checking the number that comes after this uh, because you know the array starts with zero, so one is what comes after, not before. Uh, so the URL one means uh, the second turn, which is whatever comes after the call number. And then this is casting uh, whatever value is there to integer and checking that the casting works, right? So the casting is different than nil, then it assumes that uh, this is safe, and then it tries to make a phone call. Right, so this is um, this is basically how this works. Uh, and then using Xcode, you will go to app delegate Swift, and then function application, and then split URL, and here you can see the same string, and then this is casting to integer and so on, right? So. That's how that looks. So this means that the application uh, appears to have URLs like the following, and it will ring the number without further user prompts or confirmation, right? So it's looking for URLs like the vulnerable, insecure app, Swift, uh, call slash last phone call number, and the number, or the same thing with the other insecure app, call slash last, right? So you can open uh, in your phone this URL uh, to test this. And then you can, uh, you know, practice the exercise. For this particular exercise, uh, it will work even if you don't have a jailbroken device. Um, so yeah, um, it's not necessary to have a jailbroken. 
advice to do this uh, exercise actually. So yeah, and this is how uh, the HTML looks like. So you have basically the URL, and then of course this would say uh, win an iPad or click here to win the lottery, or whatever, something like this, enticing to the user, uh, and then. Um, actual exploitation will look uh, something like this. So in Safari, you will click on some of the links and then you have this open in download version two, and then you tap on open and then you can see that the phone call uh, is being made, right? So, so yeah, this shows you that uh, the ability to make uh, an app ring uh, arbitrary phone numbers is a serious issue uh, in the mobile environment due to the possibility of making the app new numbers. Hence, the attacker can monetize the attack. So let's do uh, a demo of this. So here we have uh, the iOS and iOS phone. So I'm going to, well, I'm going to show you first how to look for the info pages, right? So you would um, tap here first on the list of applications. Uh, on fields them, and then I will scroll down to the vulnerable secure version two. So I tap on the I for uh, information, and then I go to the bundle directory. And here, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going fast with this, but there's a lot more coming. So, uh, so yeah, and then on the info fields, you just scroll down. Here you can see that it understands the format. And uh, here you can see that uh, these are the uh, URL handles, right? Bundle, secure, bundle, secure, Swift in the bundle URL schemes, right? So uh, I'm showing you these uh, from fields on the phone because if you check it um, on, if you just unread the uh, IPA file, you can get into something like this, right? So you can see here. That all this is like a binary format that BI doesn't really understand. So it's kind of messy to make any sense of this. So you can open PILIS files natively. Uh, in Mac, uh, you can check the uh, iOS files uh, using PILIS app on, the, on an iOS device. Um, and you can also use a tool called PLTL that allows you to work with list field uh, files from the command line. So with that out of the way, now we can go to actually tapping on the URL handlers. So I'm opening here the first handler, and you can see that it makes the phone call. Uh, and now I'm going to open the second one, and I tap on open, and you can see that it makes the phone call, right? So, so yeah. So. That is the end of that. So now let's talk about XSS and data exfiltration on Android and iOS. So um, let's talk about web views and data exfiltration on iOS. So basically, web views are a small web browser uh, in your app. Um, and then here we can have several scenarios. We can have HTML detection, XSS, uh, data exfiltration of local files, and then possibly using impersonation, using cross request forgery via XSS. So for this, we will use a, a customized version of Android Go. So if you use the official Android Go, this won't work. So again, you need to, you know, once you get access to the portal, which is all three, uh, you can uh, click on this link to download the Android Go uh, version that has been included in this particular exercise. Uh, and then you install this, and you will be able to uh, follow up the exercise, but it's important to use this one uh, from the training portal, especially in this case, right? So in this case, we have to go to insecure data storage and then go to share preferences and add some um, files, right? So you create um, XML file, my secret user, and the password, and hit save. Then we have to do the same with SQLite file, SQLite, my user, my password. And then we navigate to the XSS exercise, so input validations and input validation XSS. And then here we can try to check for HTML injection. Um, we can check, uh, you know, image source section or alert one, script alert one to confirm. So with the HTML injection, we saw a bigger uh, hello because we use H1 text. 
So that confirms we have HDL injection. Then we have to check if we have XSS, which we can do with one and so on. So we can try this and we can see that we get the alert. And then we can see, okay, we have XSS, what is the location? Because the location can tell us if it's a more privileged location. For example, a file URL will not have, will not be subject to the same origin policy, uh, policy especially if uh, some of the settings in the web view are insecure, right? So in this case, you can see this using file URLs. So this is uh, insecure. Uh, and then we have uh, two scenarios, one with internal storage and another with external storage, right? So external storage, uh, other applications on the phone could write to this. So you don't even need to have uh, XSS as long as you are loading HTML from uh, the SD card, other applications could modify this HTML uh, and attack it, right? So for data filtration, uh, we need to figure out the path. So uh, if uh, if you're using a simulator or Jenny motion, uh, you already have root, so you can go, you can do ADB shell and then navigate to the application, do a find, and then you can see uh, the data files are this. So the user's XML and the A gold for uh, the SQL light, right? And then, once we know that, we know the full URL of the file that we want to steal using XSS. So we can do a new XML CDP request of the path, and then we send this request, and then we alert it to demonstrate that we can read the file. Right? So we will do this with several files, and this is how this will look. Uh, yeah, and this is... Um, and then uh, if the application has SD card access, then uh, any application that uh, any file that the application can read from the SD card is something that you could steal with the XSS. Then if um, the other files on the phone that have permissions that allow the applications to read them, then this will also, uh, you know, be possible to be stolen with uh, XSS with the text filtration. So this is an example of reading a, a configuration file from the phone or reading a file from the browser which has permissions that allow other apps to read it. So uh, this is just a demonstration, right? So uh, we can do all this. And methodology-wise, you're looking first, like we have access, what is the location? So in what context does this run? And then can we see local files, right? So that is basically uh, what we uh, look for. And then with the SD card manipulation, we can do uh, an ADB pool of uh, so we can find where the file is on the sd card and then we can do an adb pool of this html file uh, modify the file locally on our computer and then we do adb push of the html file into the phone and then we can add here the payload like uh, you know uh, to read the file and then we will be alerted uh, as soon as the exercise is open right so then when you click on input validations, you will get this uh, alert immediately, right? So for root cause course uh, analysis, uh, you can uh, this. So I'll just keep this because we're a little bit uh, behind. Um, so in this case, it's because it's a DOM access because it's using DOM write using user input. So it's a DOM access uh, in the HTML using DOM write, uh, and then you can like do things to drill a little bit deeper and then see how uh, you, know, you have this uh, set JavaScript enabled to true, set allow universal access from file URLs to true, set allow file access from file URLs to true, set allow file access to true, uh, and so on, right? So all the insecure settings are pretty much enabled. This is why uh, this works as well as uh, because uh, this is loaded from a file URL. So to mitigate this, uh, if possible, use text views instead of web views because XSS is not possible with text views. Uh, if you must use web views, uh, disable as many settings as possible, especially uh, JavaScript, all file access options, and any other not strictly required functionality, right? So as in network security, you want to close uh, as much as possible, right? And then leave the minimum settings possible for the application to work output and code uh, user input prior to rendering it in any web view, and then avoid uh, DOM XSS things as much as possible. Uh, or at least uh, sanitize user input prior to assigning it to a DOM XSS sync like inner HTML, location, href, uh, and so on. So the OWASP XSS prevention cheat sheet has 
a lot more details on this. So with this, let's do uh, a quick demo uh, of this. So first I have to go to uh, Androgoat and here um, we will go to um, Insecure Data Storage, Share Preferences Part 1. And here I'm going to put my username and my password. I'm going to hit save uh, and then um, after we have saved this, we can go to SQLite and do my SQLite user, uh, my SQLite password, hit save. And then uh, with this, what we have done is create the, the XML and the SQLite uh, files. And now we can go to input validations, access. And here, uh, I'm just going to uh, try all the payloads at once, uh, which will be a little bit faster. And then I'll explain it uh, as we go. So, yeah, I think that should be enough. So, if I go back to the application, uh, let's see the application. So if I paste this, you can see this is the alert one. This is the alert location. So we can see, uh, you know, that this is a file URL. So it's uh, potentially insecure, uh, trouble. And then this is the username and the password. So we can read the credentials from the XML file using the XSS. So you can see my username and my password from the XML file using XSS. And then these are the credentials from the SQL database. You can see my SQLite user, my SQLite password, are the credentials that are readable uh, you know, from the XSS, right? So this is another alert. And then this is the file from Drosser, so we can read also all the files on the phone as long as uh, the permissions allow the app to read it. Um, yeah, and that's basically it. So with this, let's try to uh, rush a little bit through WebViews on iOS. So basically it's the same thing, but um, I'll, I'll show it on the demo directly. Uh, but in this case, um, instead of file URLs, you could face uh, Apple Web Data. So this is basically another um, possible uh, equivalent to file, right? In Android, you can also have, in iOS, you can also have file URLs, but you can have Apple Web Data is kind of equivalent. It means uh, out of hope filtration, and then you can uh, retrieve all the files. Methodology wise is basically the same thing alert one, alert location, and then try to read files from the phone, the phone history, phone call history, uh, things like this. And then for the root cause, you're looking for WK Web Views and UI Web Views. Uh, it's possible on both, but uh, the UI web view is kind of weaker uh, by default. So in UI web views, actually by default, in this exercise, you have much higher chances of damage. Then this is a string concatenation in Swift, which is a little bit weird because you have the backslash and then the, the name here. And then this is how it looks like from extra. Okay? So you have low HTML string, of hello and the name, so this is the vulnerability. You can see that uh, Xcode understands Swift because it's showing the name in a different color than the hello. So this means that uh, this is a string concatenation and it's a little bit easier to see on Xcode. Then because the base URL is nil, this means it's being loaded from Apple Web Data, which means that, uh, you know, uh, the application is uh, vulnerable to data exfiltration as well because it's using a UI web view without a URL, and therefore we don't have the same origin policy, right? So we can read local files and we can send them to arbitrary third-party websites. So uh, in general, um, UI web view is much more uh, insecure because by default it has this web WebKit allow universal access from file URLs and WebKit allow file access from file URLs. And these two insecure settings are disabled by default in the WK web view, which is faster, is the way of doing things and uh, safer by default. 
Uh, and also uh, in UI web views, you cannot turn off uh, JavaScript entirely. Well, in WK web views, you can, right? So in general, try to use WK web views for mitigation purposes. Uh, and if you have a UI web view and you have access, chances are you can do uh, more damage. So with this, let me do a demo pretty quickly and then we can wrap up. And we are more or less uh, on time. So in here, we have to go to uh, view issues and then start challenge and i'm going to open uh, i'm going to try all the payloads at once which will save us a little bit of time and then i can explain uh, uh, what this is about so if i go here and then you paste the payloads in, the, um, in this and now uh, we start getting the alerts, right? So now, because JavaScript is asynchronous, you won't get the alerts in the same order if you do this. But you can see here we have the alert uh, of locations showing us Apple Web Data. So this is where we get excited because the potential for stealing local files. This is the alert one, which confirms the XSS. This is reading the phone call uh, history from the phone using XSS. Uh, and yeah, this is another SQLite database from the phone. Um, and yeah, and this is pretty much it. So this proves that, uh, you know, with access, you can also uh, steal local files. So uh, if there's any questions, uh, now is the time. And then uh, before I start answering questions, uh, just to mention that if you go to store.7security.com, you can get uh, this workshop as well as other workshops. Uh, so this one is only one hour. There's another one called uh, Practical Mobile App Attacks, by example, and that is almost four hours. So it has a lot more examples, it goes into these scenarios a, a little bit, uh, you know, with a little bit more time. So if this was a little bit fast, uh, I think you will like that one as well. And then there's a lot more attacks from real pen than that one. So I think you will like that. And then just to mention as well, there's a discount on the score on the store. If you are interested on any of the course of the courses, there's 25% off. So if you use the NY for New Year 25, you can use that. So with that, uh, let me check if there's any questions. Uh, I'll, leave, uh, I'll leave this uh, for sure. Could you give us an example how this could be exploited without the browsable property? So yes, the, without the browsable property uh, on uh, on Android, uh, I show uh, the ADB command, the deep links, so the deep link tester. So those, these would all be ways. Um, let me. Yeah, this is the question. So these would all be ways in which uh, that I showed during the demo, right? So these would all be ways in which you can do uh, you can do this, right? So if I go here, uh, user follow with deep link tester. So this is going to work uh, without browsable because this is an application uh, installed uh, on the phone, right? So with deep link tester with ADB, yeah. Uh, so browsable is just for the attack from the browser itself. Maybe share slides only because this might be, get a little bit messy. Okay. So uh, so yeah. Okay. So I think I answered that. If I understood correctly, without browsable, we would need a malicious app on the victim's phone to export. Yes. So that is correct. Uh, yeah, okay, so I think that's the only question. So any any other questions? Seems we're good. Anyone else? If there's no more questions, uh, or if you have any questions, if you are shy, uh, you don't want to ask the question in the chat, you can send an email, uh, you know, to admin at semisecurity.com and we will do our best to uh, answer as well. I hope you found this interesting. And yeah, there's a lot of other uh, 
workshops that you can get like this for free on the on the store, right? So it's not just about the paid stuff. You can also get some free stuff. So cool. So then maybe uh, we wrap it here, or we like uh, one more minute if somebody has a question. Hey, thanks everyone. Thanks for joining Agfest Holiday. Hope you have a good time. Actually, it seems there's no more questions. So thank you everybody for coming and I hope you, uh, you enjoy this. Thanks a lot, Abraham. Uh, and yeah, if, if some of the people watching on YouTube didn't uh, get access to, to the workshop, you can get access yourself on the store. Or if you prefer, you can send an email to admin at security.com and we can give you access to it for free. Yeah, so that's all. Thanks again. Um, the store will be faster because it's automated. So uh, maybe, you know, while we're sleeping or something <laughs> because of different time zones, uh, you know, you will be able to get it. Right. Uh, awesome. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's leave it here. Um, thank you again, everybody, and Happy New Year. Thanks, Paul. Have a good one.